proposed by Bangladesh in 2014 itself. Now, significant is this agreement? Mm, actually, uh, on 21st, last Friday, um, there was no agreement signed. The agreement or the MOU actually was signed between the State Minister for Energy of Bangladesh and the Honorable Minister for uh, Power uh, Water Resources of Nepal in August last year. This was an MOU for cooperation in the power and energy sector. And under that MOU, the two sides have set up a mechanism called Joint Working Group and Joint Steering Group. Um, which is at the level of joint secretaries and the secretaries of the two ministries who have been empowered to explore the ways uh, that power trade between Bangladesh and Nepal can take place. Hmm. Bangladesh has expressed for a long time uh, that Bang since we are an energy deficit country uh, because, because of our high growth rate, high economic growth rate, even though now we are producing around uh, 20,000 megawatt, it is estimated that by 2040, our uh, energy requirement will be more than 40,000 megawatt. And we need to source from various sources, and Nepal is one of them. Yeah, we are also thinking of, uh, we are already importing from India. We are also considering importing from Bhutan and Nepal, and total, uh, we are our requirement since it is so high. We would like to import around 9,000 megawatt, and because Nepal has so much high potential in the hydro sector, we think it will be a win-win situation. Okay. So it is very significant that the secretaries of the two countries have met first in Nepal last December, and this was the second meeting of the secretaries where even more details were discussed to enable the power trade to take place. Mangaldas wants to. Uh Purchase the electricity from uh, 9,000 megawatt from direct from Nepal or from the three countries Nepal, India, and Bhutan. 9,000 from Nepal will, would also be good enough. So if Nepal can supply 9,000, why not? And 9,000 is just an indicative figure. It could be even more. It could be less. It depends on a lot of issues. Uh, but 9,000 was a round figure, uh, which I think was given by our minister when uh, the journalist asked him. So it's a very general figure. It could be even more. Okay. But Bangladesh has to use Indian land for the transmission line to purchase the electricity from Nepal. And still have not the, the uh, transmission line. So uh, will India agree for the transmission line? How challenging is this? That is up to India to decide whether they will agree or not. But uh, so far, the regional uh, mechanism that now stands, it is possible to... Uh, for the power trade between Bangladesh and Nepal to take place. It could be uh, via India, uh, using the Indian grid also. Uh, but we need to work out the mechanism, and that is why the secretaries are meeting. Um, and just to mention that even in BIMSTEC, last uh, BIMSTEC summit that was held here, the BIMSTEC countries have signed a power grid agreement, and also under SARC there is another uh, power grid agreement also. So various mechanisms are there. So any of these could be used for the power trade. I think technicalities should not, would not stand in the way of the trade to take this. But what do you think, uh, how long time it will take uh, to purchase the electricity from Nepal to supply? Nepal uh, can right supply. Now, right now, even Nepal does not have the capacity to meet its own needs. I think once Nepal is uh, energy self-sufficient, then it will depend on how soon Nepal can be uh, is in the position to supply the energy. Okay. And Bangladesh wants to buy electricity from the plant of its own investment or wants to buy from the project owned by Nepal government or private investors, especially? It, we are open to everything. We have already announced uh, many times, our minister also did, that we can uh, invest one more than a billion dollars in the Nepalese hydropower sector. Our power uh, private sector is also interested. We are willing to go for joint venture. We can just directly purchase from Nepal. We can go for equity share, anything. Uh, we are flexible. So we do not have any fixed um, idea. Or, uh, you know, we do not have any fixed idea on how we would do it. We are open to anything that would be beneficial for both the countries. It means Bangladesh just wants the electricity from anywhere. From <laughs> Yes, we want, we need the electricity supply 
Um, whatever is uh, cheap, efficient, and of most important, it has to be in, uh, environment friendly, eco friendly, because we are moving from uh, carbon based uh, electricity to clean fuel, so renewable energy. So I think hydro would be a very good option. In which sector has Bangladesh plan to use the electricity purchased from Nepal, especially? There is no sector identified. It could be for anything. I mean, uh, our total demand is going to be more than 40,000 megawatts. So it will be industry definitely. It could be anywhere. You don't, you don't segment uh, the use of the electricity. It could be, it would feed to the overall grid. And from the grid, it will go to wherever the demand is. Do you believe that the use of electricity will reduce the dependency on the mineral energy and ultimately will bring industrial revolution along with the economic revolution in Bangladesh? You see, economic revolution is already taking place in Bangladesh. It is the fastest growing country in Asia. Uh, this year, our GDP growth rate was more than 8%. And uh, we have already graduated from an LDC into a middle income country. So the economic transformation is already in place and it has reached a point where it will only grow faster. It has been identified by the IMF to be among the next 11 countries and you know all those uh, indicators are there. Um, energy is required to keep this momentum, to keep the momentum of the growth in place. Without energy, industries, uh, the manufacturing, we have a very strong manufacturing base that manufacturing base will not be able to function. So for that we need energy. And besides, uh, since people of Bangladesh now have more than, um, you know, our per capita income is around almost $1,800 now. So people, once you have money, you demand more things. You need ACs, you want uh, washing machines, you need 24 hour electricity. So all that, for all that also, we will be need, read, uh, needing electricity. Uh, we also, uh, just the other day I was reading in the newspaper that we are planning to have electric railway also. Right now our railways are full, uh, run by diesel lo locomotives. Um, I was reading somewhere that we will be converting into electric uh, railway very soon. So for that also we will need electricity. So, you know, you... It's sort of like it feeds, the demand keeps on increasing. The more you supply, the more the demand increases. And it adds to your comfort and the way of life. What do you think, uh, after how, how many years uh, you can get electricity from Nepal? As I said, it will depend on how soon Nepal will become self-sufficient and how soon Nepal will be able to put its projects online and can supply. But Nepal government used to say that, claim that uh, from 2020, Nepal will be uh, sufficient electricity. That will depend on Nepal. Okay. It's not up to us. Yeah. Okay, let's change the topics. Uh, in recent days, uh, medical education in Bangladesh has been talked of the town in Nepal. What are the other programs in which Nepali students are uh, pursuing higher education in Bangladesh? Mm, recently, we have been receiving a lot of applications for pharmacy, uh, business, uh, in engineering, uh, agriculture, uh, leather technology, uh, IT, so various subjects. Nepali students are going to Bangladesh for uh, many subjects. For example, almost one-fourth of the applications are for different subjects. Uh, but as an ambassador in Nepal, uh, in which subject do you prefer? It is, uh, you know, all the subjects we provide quality education in, in all subjects. So it is up to the Nepali students to decide where they want to study, what would be a good career for them, so they can go to study wherever they want. Most of the students pursuing MBBS in Bangladesh could not get quota seats here in Nepal. Mm -hmm. What are the potential problems and challenges to pursue MBBS in Bangladesh? The challenges I would say is for them to, first of all, in the government medical colleges, there is also a quota for Nepali students. Bangladesh is offering around 30 seats every year to the Nepali students to study in the government uh, medical colleges. For that, the challenge is that they have to have very good results. It has to be more than 90% in class 10 and class 12. 
That is the biggest challenge. They have to be good students. And the next challenge, I would say, is for them to select good universities wherever they want to go to study. Okay. Are all university and college in Bangladesh of high quality for pursuing MBBS or not? Uh, I think you also know that if there are 50 colleges, uh, then out of that, uh, at least 10 percent will be excellent, okay. A plus. It is the same in all countries, not only Bangladesh. So, like 10 percent will be A plus. Uh, maybe 30 percent colleges will be A, and then maybe another uh, percentage will be like B plus, and maybe 5 percent will be C. So it depends. I mean, it is uh, not all colleges are the best, or not all colleges are equal. Uh, the fee or the, um, the uh, you know, all the other supplementary services are also not the same. The tuition fees or the other charges, they are not the same. So it cannot be possible for all the colleges to have the same quality. So, so how do uh, students or the parents know, know that these colleges are the good one and these colleges is basically okay and this is not this college the, the, the university one. grants commission of bangladesh publishes uh, a list of colleges where their colleges are graded according to the quality of education they provide they can look into that list or they can come to the embassy where we can also tell them which are the good um, uh, colleges and which are the bad ones can embassy uh, teach or uh, counsel the students that this college can be the good one for if some Nepali, Nepalese student wants to go there? Um, you see, uh, some Nepali students go to colleges which even we have not heard the name of. Mm -hmm. You know, they are so remote or so unknown or uh, of such bad quality that not even any Bangladeshi student would go there. So we are sometimes surprised when in the visa application they put the name of some very uh, unknown college. And at that time we counsel the student that are you sure you want to go there? Uh, we tell the parents to come and we talk to them and we tell them that you should go and take a look at the college because since Bangladesh is so near, it is only one hour by flight. So we often counsel them to go take a look at the college, see if there are other Nepali students there, go and talk to them, see if they have a good experience and then you should decide because it is a matter of your child's future. And uh, you know, it is, oh, they are also investing a lot of money. So before they do that, they should make a uh, double check the standard of education and the reputation of the college before making the final decision. That is what I would do if my child was in, involved. When my son was, uh, we were selecting an university for my son. Uh, what did we do? We looked at um, all the, uh, you know, the, um, the gradings and then the student recommendations and the students' comments and uh, the listing of the education board and everything and then we made a final decision, right? Because we are investing in his future. We cannot just depend on some uh, somebody, some consultant or somebody telling me that it's a good college mm -hmm. and I didn't, we cannot send a child like that. What do you think? In some uh, cases, uh, also, we have seen, uh, seen some problem in Bangladesh also for studying, either in MBBS or in other subject. Uh, which fault uh, which comes out as a measure? A consultancy, parents or students? Or the university in Bangladesh? Uh, uh, what sort of problems are you talking about? Yeah, in some cases, uh, as you mentioned that some, some college we have never heard in Bangladesh, students are trying to apply. Because in, in, in the website, in the web page, they have put the good uh, building, build good uh, quality, and they have uh, make us uh, such of uh, things like this. Mm -hmm. So that uh, when the students search in Google, then they try to uh, go there. Yes, it is also like that, uh, for example, uh, here, uh, I will give you uh, an example. It's different. There are many hotels in Kathmandu, right? Uh, but some of the hotels have beautiful uh, rooms in the website and everything. And then once the tourist comes here, they see that it's horrible. It's dirty and the heating doesn't work and the AC doesn't work. Nothing works. And then they start complaining, oh, this is a terrible hotel. So from the website, you cannot really make a full decision. Exactly. You should verify with others uh, before you make. I believe if you're investing uh, $30,000, $40,000, uh, on your child's education, you must get a second opinion. What is your suggestion? 
to contact the embassy, to contact the uh, Nepal's government body or to uh, contact the uh, Grand uh, Commission? Of course, they have to go through the embassy. The procedure that has to be followed is that the student has to apply, even if it is for a government, whether it is government or private, the application has to be submitted at the embassy. The embassy will then forward the application to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Bangladesh, who will then forward it to the Ministry of Health of Bangladesh. And then, the, depending on the, um, if it's a private education, the Ministry of Health uh, will contact that college. They will confirm that yes, they have, uh, even the private colleges have a quota. Like, um, they cannot admit more, uh, for foreign students, um, more than 40% of their uh, you know, seats, uh, they cannot admit foreign students. So the Ministry of Health will check whether they are uh, ex extending their quota or whether they are within the quota. And if they are within the quota, then they will give the permission for them to take the foreign student. Then the college will give an offer letter to the student. And the offer letter will, copy of the letter will come to the embassy. Hmm. And uh, then we will issue the visa. So unless the application has been forwarded by the embassy, even if the student goes by himself and gets admitted, he will not get the student visa. Okay. And if he does not take the proper visa from the embassy, if he goes on a tourist visa, or if he takes on a rival visa in Bangladesh, once he is there, his uh, category of visa cannot be changed. That will never be changed, okay? If it goes on tourist visa, he will have to come back to the Kathmandu, come to the embassy, get the proper visa, and then again go. In Bangladesh, it is impossible to change the, the, the category of visa, okay? So at some point or the other, he will have to come to the embassy. And at that time, we try to counsel the student. Sometimes they tell us that we have already given the advance fund uh, fees, so we have already, um, you know, submitted, deposited the advance fee to the college and we cannot change. Or they tell us that uh, the consultant has uh, already taken the money and we cannot change. In that case, we are not able to help them. But very often they come, they ask us uh, and we can recommend. So I always suggest that please come to the embassy, it's free charge, there are no charges for the, you know, counselling. Uh, we have no vested interest in any college, so they can come and talk to our people. It means uh, MS is ready to counsel the student or the parents. Oh yes, because you know we want every student to have a good experience in Bangladesh. I mean, why would we encourage the student to go to Bangladesh and come back with a bad experience? It creates a bad impression about my country. Why would we want that? We don't want it. We want every student to go there, have a good quality education, and following that, they can come back here, they can go to any other place, they can go get a good uh, job as a doctor, and then they can uh, give a good social service. So we do not want them to have a bad experience. Okay, bye. Time and again, strikes and protests are being called in Bangladesh as well. Still, the country faces high political instability, like Nepal. <laughs> Can one say that the education environment is suitable in Bangladesh? Uh, there is no political instability in Bangladesh. Uh, since 2009, uh, the Awami League has returned to power. This is the third time that Awami League, under the dynamic leadership of our Prime Minister, has come back to power uh, following free, fair, democratic elections. So let me clarify that there is no political instability in Bangladesh. If there are movements or uh, some sort of protest, that is part of the democratic process. And um, I don't know uh, what protest you are referring to, uh, but so far uh, there is no, um, you know, there is uh, no case where uh, students of any country, not only Nepal, we get students from seven, uh, 22 countries from all over the world, including Central Asia, other SARC countries, uh, Southeast Asia, Africa. So all these students are studying in Bangladesh in a very uh, safe and secure environment. Okay. Bangladesh provides scholarships to Nepali students to pursue higher education. In which programs the students are provided scholarships and what are the criteria for it? 
um, I mentioned before, it's under the SARC uh, scholarship. It's not actually a scholarship, it's a, um, it's a, um, uh, what do you call it? It's like a, um, we give them uh, preferential rates. They pay the same rates as the local students. So scholarship means that they will be receiving a stipend. They don't receive a stipend, but they pay the same rate as the local students do. There are some incidental charges, which are not very much. Um, around 30 students, Nepali students, get the chance to study in Bangladesh, which is among the highest out of the 22 countries. Um, and the only criteria is that they should have very good grades because it is a merit-based uh, system. And only the, those in the merit list who are higher up in the merit list will be selected. So uh, the only criteria is that they should be good students and that they should have good grades. How do the how do my students knows about uh, the either scholarship or the uh, the low low fear, low cost education? Uh, we uh, every year we circulate we give the notice through our Facebook and website and uh, in the notice board also. Um, it is very well known already. Okay. And we have been offering the, this since 1976, mm -hmm. only four years after our independence when we were already an LDC. Even then, we were offering scholarships to Nepali students. In fact, Nepali students have been going to Bangladesh even before we became independent, um, since even 1960s. 60. 1963 or 64, I think, the senior most uh, doctor in Nepal has graduated from Bangladesh. So it is not uh, a recent phenomenon that Nepali students are going to Bangladesh. Okay. Nepal and Bangladesh have tied long friendship from uh, 1972, after which Nepal exports yellow lentils, cardamom, handicrafts and kasmere, whereas Bangladesh exports electronics goods, garments, etc. How do you see the economic relation between two countries and what are the potentials? Uh, well, the bilateral trade between Bangladesh and Nepal, I personally think that it is really far below the potential. Uh, Bangladesh is exporting around uh, 35 million dollars to Nepal and uh, Nepal is exporting around 11 million dollars and I think there is a possibility that it could grow even further. It could reach up to 100 million, I think, with a little bit of effort. Um, the problem is that um, the challenge is, is that, um, you know, Nepal, both Bangladeshi and Nepali exporters prefer to export to the bigger markets like the USA or uh, Japan or the EU, they, are, they don't want to focus on the smaller markets, right? Uh, that is one factor. Uh, the good thing is many Bangladeshi exporters are now coming, recognizing that Nepal is a good market and we are exporting not only electronics and um, garments, garments is not really coming in that quality here. Uh, we are exporting things like furniture, uh, plastic wear, electronics, motorcycles, um, we are also exporting pharmaceuticals. A lot of products are being exported to Nepal. Um, and we want to encourage exports from Nepal to Bangladesh and that is why we have offered Nepal duty-free access um, to, for many of your exportable products to our market. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Nepali side is taking a long time to study the list and to finalize. Uh, so that is why we are not able to implement the duty free issue. If that was, uh, you know, finalized, I think the Nepali export to Bangladesh would increase many times. It would at least double. Yeah. But Nepal can export uh, mostly vegetables and the handicrafts, I think so. And no, there is many other things like, uh, as you mentioned, pa pashmina could be yes, exported because even though Bangla there is hardly any winter in Bangladesh, we still for two weeks we do need uh, to wear a shawl. Uh, then uh, there are herbal products uh, which you can export to Bangladesh. You can export coffee, you can export tea, you can export um, like electricity you will be exporting hopefully very soon. Um, you could export your carpets. You can export gems and jewelries because I have seen every tourist who comes here goes back um, buying some uh, Nepali, you know, jewelry. small jewelry. So I think that would be very popular in Bangladesh. So there are many products that you could sell. Okay, let's talk about the tourism. 
how can both country work together together for the tourism development and exchange programs uh, tourists where can nepali go to visit in bangladesh how do people in bangladesh think about nepal well uh, there are many tourists coming from bangladesh to nepal last year i think about 35000 tourists came and uh, this will increase i think in the future because as i said bangladesh is becoming a richer country and we are now traveling more earlier we didn't travel abroad so much now we are traveling more and nepal is only one hour flight from bangladesh and uh, your himalayas are a big source of attraction for us so a lot of bangladeshis like to come to nepal uh, similarly but no, not enough nepalis go to bangladesh for tourism um, you know we have a beautiful beach uh, called cox's bazaar it's the longest sandy beach in the world uh, we have mangrove forests we have uh, tea gardens we have huge rivers where we have river tourism there are many places where nepalis could also go to visit in bangladesh and one way we could boost the tourism is by having direct uh, bus service so this motor vehicle agreement that we have been talking for a long time the bbin motor vehicle agreement if that was implemented it would not only benefit tourism it will also in, improve our trade also trade because that would allow the direct um, goods to come from bangladesh to nepal and also nepal to bangladesh and the tourists from bangladesh would be very easily they could come and visit uh, you know uh, your eastern the jhapa district or ilam those places would be very easily accessible to us so they there i think the tourism would increase in that area uh, many fold now tourists from bangladesh are only going to pokhara they don't know any other place in nepal so they would be very happy i think they would be able to see kanchanjunga um, you can see kanchanjunga from bangladesh also so that way you can uh, you know the bangladeshi tourists would see kanchanjunga from bangladesh and then they would come to nepal and could also see kanchanjunga so i think it would be a good attraction but we do need uh, direct access um, using uh, the bus uh, for that but i think in the both country they have uh, the free visa and the on arrival visa for both yes yeah, that is there but uh, that is only at the airport uh, okay. for the land port uh, we bangladesh is still not giving uh, uh, is not in a position to give on arrival visa uh, because uh, we now have machine readable visa and uh, we are uh, there are some technical issues about putting the, all that into place in the land port so we are working on it hopefully that will be in place very soon but uh, nowadays nepalese people also used to go uh, as a tourist in the thailand singapore malaysia etc but why we can't uh, promote bangladesh i, I think bangladesh uh, need to work more about it yes definitely we need to work uh, and uh, just as i said that in trade also we are focusing the bigger countries i think in tourism promotion also uh, the nepali tour operators and the bangladeshi tour operators are trying to only promote tourism in the bigger capitals and ignoring uh, each other's markets so i think uh, definitely there is a lot of work to be done there okay how both countries can work for the mutual benefits in which sector both countries can assist and cooperate each other rest of this issues uh, sectors what do you think i think most of all we need to focus on promoting trade because uh, that is the uh, tourism education as you said and another important area is climate change both nepal and bangladesh are extremely vulnerable to the effects of climate change and global warming and uh, you know whatever happens in the himalayas has an effect in bangladesh because the your snows will melt uh, they will go to the river and the river will ultimately flow into bangladesh so that will have an effect in bangladesh so we need to cooperate in that area also so i think um, a major area of cooperation should be uh, climate change but uh, every country used to say that to work and they are trying to work in the climate change sector but definitely uh, these countries like nepal and himalayas countries will affect more than others country as you mentioned that uh, also the uh, if the snows start melt and goes ultimately goes to the bangladesh like this how do we can control the carcinogenic uh, fuels etc to control uh, to make uh, uh, 
to make to the positive way to control the climate change problems of the yes that is where um, all the countries of the world are trying to come to a understanding and um, work on emission controls and keep the temperature of the earth uh, from rising more than uh, i think it's 4 degrees isn't it um, but uh, according to ec mode even that will have a very bad effect on the himalayas, the himalayas. and uh, not only uh, nepal bangladesh is also equally vulnerable because it is estimated that more than 15% of bangladesh will become flooded because of sea level rise sea. so once uh, if 15% of bangladesh is flooded where will all this uh, all these people go so it is in an extremely it's a matter of urgency for both our countries to work together how do we can work <laughs> there are many multilateral forums where we should be cooperating and we should be um, having common points where we can um, talk to the other nations and cooperate okay and and another thing what are the perceptions of the bangladeshi people about nepal when they came back last year 25 uh, 35000 bangladesh tourists came to nepal and go back what are their perceptions about it? Uh, they take back a uh, very good perception about Nepal. Uh, you know, generally people are very sympathetic. When there was the earthquake, immediately there was so much outpouring of uh, assistance from Bangladesh to for Nepal. Um, we sent uh, 20,000 metric tons of rice. We were one of the first countries to send a medical team um with you know doctors to help the victims and so much assistance came both from the government and also from the private sector and also individuals so there is a lot of sympathy and love for nepal in bangladesh and what about you your perception personal perception what about the <laughs> country well i have been here for 6 years if i did not like nepal or i did not love the people of nepal i would definitely not stay here for such a long time so you can understand how much i like nepal thank you so much ma'am thank you सब को सब भाई राम रातोपाटी डट कम